GHS 41.
ask him that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We ask him that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of Zechariah The Book of Zechariah Chapter 10 Chapter 10 Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight, because the Lord is with them, and the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their hearts shall rejoice as through wine, yea, their children shall see it and be glad, their hearts shall rejoice in the Lord." I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, and they shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt, and gather them out of Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction, and shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up. And the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. And I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. Chapter 11 Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Howl, fir tree, for the cedar is fallen. Because the mighty are spoiled, howl, O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage is come down. There is a voice of the howling of the shepherds, for their glory is spoiled, a voice of the roaring of young lions, for the pride of Jordan is spoiled. Thus saith the Lord my God, Feed the flock of the slaughter whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men every one into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his king. And they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. And I will feed the flock of slaughter, even you, O poor of the flock. And I took unto me two staves, the one I called beauty, and the other I called bands, and I fed the flock. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month, and my soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. Then said I, I will not feed you. That that dieth, let it die, and that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off and let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder that I might break my covenant which I had made with all the people. And it was broken in that day, and so the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. And I said unto them, 
If ye think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was prized at of them. And I took the thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Then I cut asunder mine other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock! The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We'll remain standing as we collect our tithe and offering now. I read from Malachi chapter 3, verse It says, Be ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be many.
My case is settled. Called by his blood. Jesus is the reason. The deed is done. My case is settled by his blood. You don't need to carry those burdens anymore. You don't need to carry those burdens anymore. My case is settled by his blood. Remain in captivity 
in the city joy in your life joy in your family and joy everywhere in jesus name it's a prophecy specifically for you this december 2022 if jesus takes off his hand from upholding the earth the stars the moon the sun everything will collapse but Fret not. GCK Authority has announced the next level move. Christ comes and intervenes in your life. In the hospital there, you will not die. Christ, your great transformer, this December will lead you to triumph. Zoom into your December 2022. From the land of honor and integrity comes two in one GCK live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria. The Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for youth, young adults and professionals. Titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022. At 0600 hours GMT, all broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platform. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi says, You'll praise God. Amen. You'll give your testimony. And more, as excellent worship comes from the USA with Jonathan White, our guest music minister. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Alpha Location Choir, please. Praise the Lord. We're excited here tonight. Now, Pastor, the, that woman that was healed, having mental problem, deranged, insane, picking things on the street, on the road, eating all those things, wearing rags, when the power of the Lord came and she was healed, delivered totally. Not only the pastor, the pastor said that he visited her. If I remember correctly, people from around the town. Let me go and see. Let me go and see. Pastor, am I right? Looks like my brain is the brain of a teenager. And today, at the power of the Lord will come upon you. Miracle will happen. Yeah. Healing will happen. Yeah. Deliverance will happen. Yeah. People will come and see you. Yeah. Maybe they will take your photograph and send it to me at the headquarters. Yeah. I will see you yeah. with miracle, yeah. with salvation, yeah. with healing, yeah. with deliverance. Yeah. 
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We well, thank you tonight and bless your name. And Lord, we pray that today you manifest your power. Amen. You manifest your almighty miracle working power. And everyone here tonight will receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Extraordinary, explosive miracle, explosive manifestation of the power of God in every life in Jesus' name. Amen salvation tonight forgiveness tonight freedom tonight healing tonight recovery tonight lord we pray there will be a manifestation from heaven confirm it lord in every life in jesus name i pray god bless you you can sit down tonight as we come to the final night for this november gck the lord has done quite a lot of things he has saved he has forgiven he has set free he has turned lives around for the better he has healed he has delivered he has set free now we want to see that we continue in the love of God, continue in the salvation of the Lord, continue in the mercy of the Lord, continue in all that the Lord has done. Remember, it's the power that never fails, the grace that never fails, the name that never fails, the word that never fails, and the mercy now that never fails. Tonight, we're looking at the continual mercies of our ever compassionate maker. He is our maker. He is our creator. He is our redeemer. He is the lover of our souls. And he is the resurrection power for every soul. And he does that by his compassion. He does that by his mercy. He does that by his love. The love that never fails. The name that never fails. And the mercy, the compassion that never, never fails. The continual mercies of our ever compassionate maker. I'm reading to you from First Peter. And we're looking at chapter 1, verse 3. First Peter, chapter 1, reading from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy. Mercy, the mercy that saves, the mercy that heals, the mercy that delivers, and the mercy that works supernatural miracle in every life abundant mercy inexhaustible mercy the mercy that never fails from his abundant mercy he has begotten us again born again begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead and then in verse 4 he says to an inheritance incorruptible undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you then he tells us in verse 5 it says who are kept by the power of god it's one thing to be saved but then to be kept in that salvation it's one thing to be redeemed but to be kept in that redemption it's one thing to be forgiven and to become the righteousness of god in christ and to be kept in that righteousness it's one thing to be free from sin with an instantaneous miracle working power of god and then to be kept free 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 completely in your spirit in your soul and in your body who are kept by the power of god through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time the lord will keep you Amen. keep you in salvation 
and keep you in your healing and keep you in your deliverance look at romans chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 in romans chapter 12 verse 1 i beseech you therefore because of the mercy of god i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that she present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service it says now you have been in the service of sin and you have been in the service of satan and you have been in the service of self the selfishness the self-centeredness the self-will you had committed your life to that before but now he says now you are saved now you are born again now you become a new creature in christ that now you'll present your body what does that mean my body i present what it means is everything your body can do from your heart your soul your mind your hands what your hand can do good works and what your legs can do walking for the lord and everything your sight your ears every part of your body that has now received the healing virtue of the lord you present that unto the lord as a living sacrifice holy without sin without evil without the past bad habits anymore acceptable unto god and that is your reasonable service and then he says in verse two in verse two and be not conformed to this world the world of defilement the world of disobedience the world of rebellion the world of evil the world of transgression that now you were with them before drinking what they were drinking smoking what they were smoking saying what they were saying and dancing they are dancing too and doing everything they were doing in their night clothes but now he says you're saved you're born again and because you are saved and born again be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good as you continue in the grace of god as you continue in the love of god as you continue in the life of godliness then you will prove every day god is good in your life and when you follow the lord and your life represents and reflects the gospel your life represents and reflects the goodness of god heaven will shine on you the power of the lord will shine on you and you will prove you will know you will experience day after day that good acceptable and the perfect will of God. Amen in your life. Amen, Amen every day. Amen. The continual mercies of our ever compassionate maker. Three things we're looking at. Number one, redemption and full salvation through God's unmerited mercy number two recovery from frightful sicknesses through gracious unceasing mercies number three righteousness of faithful saints through guarded unadulterated mercies in your life number one number one redemption and full salvation through God's unmerited mercy. Redemption. <clears throat> Redemption. What does that mean? You have been in the slave market. You have been in bondage. You were actually tied down in that slavery. But now the Redeemer, his name is Christ. Redeemer, Savior healer 
sanctifier, the one who purifies our lives, purifier, the refiner, the one that takes us up and he turns our lives around. Now that you are redeemed, he also wants to, you to have not only a partial salvation, I was smoking uh, three packets of cigarettes before. Now I only smoke uh, one packet partial. He wants you to have full salvation and full redemption and full freedom. He wants you in your life, in the private and in the public, anywhere you are, the things you were addicted to before. He comes as your deliverer. He comes as your redeemer and he breaks every yoke and destroys everything and he gives you full salvation through God's unmerited mercy. In Exodus chapter 15, looking at verse 13, it says, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation you see there it's by the mercy of god that the children of israel were redeemed and for us today is that same mercy of god that redeems us look at how that mercy works in our life works in every life and all that mercy of god will work in your life in psalm 51 reading from verse 1 psalm 51 verse 1 have mercy upon me you see it's not by marriage forgiveness not by marriage freedom not by marriage salvation not by marriage full salvation not by marriage it says have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions when you're saved and when you're forgiven all your transgressions everything blotted out fully entirely completely totally he blots out everything look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says wash me thoroughly from my iniquity sorrow washing that he cleanses you he washes you and all the defilement of the past all the waywardness of the past all the sinfulness of the past he washes everything away and cleanses me from my sin verse 3 tells us it says for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me verse 4 says against thee and thee only have i sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judges then in verse 5 it says behold i was shapen in iniquity the iniquity was in him in me in everyone from the point of conception because the father the mother and then the great the a grandfather and the grandmother and the great great grandfather and adam and eve when you go down the line it says the unclean cannot bring forth a clean person because adam and eve from the very beginning sinned against god now everything i went down to everyone and it says behold i was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me verse 6 says it says behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts he wants the truth he wants the sincerity he wants the righteousness he wants the transparency he wants the love of god he wants the redemption he wants the salvation he wants the cleanness cleanliness he wants the holiness he wants everything from the inward path that's why when he saves us 
That's why when he redeems us, that's why when he turns our lives around, he does it from the inside. Because on the in the inward past, he doesn't want only the external righteousness, only the external change. He wants an inward change, an inward transformation, an inward redemption, an inward forgiveness as well as forgiveness. He says, Thou, the Almighty God, the Holy One, the Perfect One, Thou, God in heaven desires the in the inward past and in the hidden past thou shalt make me to know wisdom look at verse 7 in verse 7 he said purge me he says i'm ready purge me forgive me cleanse me and take everything that is evil away from me blot out every transgression and make me clean and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow look at verse 8 in verse 8 make me to hear joy and gladness that 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 the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice then in verse 9 in verse 9 it says hide thy face from my sins blot out all not some blot out not only the you know this one i don't like that one i don't like that one they are even dangerous in my life blot that one away but this one is sweet there are people that hold on to their sin because they say this one is sweet which it will not be bitter it's sweet in your mouth it's sweet at the time you're committing the sin but even in life on earth here it will be bitter eventually and then if you don't repent and you die in that sweet sin it will be bitter punishment in hell fire forever and ever hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my transgression my iniquities verse 10 in verse 10 it says create in me a clean heart O god a clean heart O god you see sin a defiled our hearts made our hearts dirty sin had made it dark and dirty and defiled but now the service is praying it was the grace of god the mercy of God, the blood that blots away every sin and every transgression. He wants that blood to be applied. And when that blood is applied in your heart, like it will do tonight for everyone. I said it will do tonight for everyone. It will clean you up, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me verse 11 in verse 11 he said cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy holy spirit from me in verse 12 and he says in verse 12 restore unto me give unto me grant unto me restore unto me the joy of thy salvation the joy of thy salvation when you are saved the spirit of god will be a witness in your heart your sins are forgiven your life is turned around righteousness has replaced sinfulness in your life and the joy of heaven and the joy of salvation will be in your heart not partial joy not intermittent joy you're happy now and then next time next step you're unhappy you're sorrowful up and down on the mountain in the valley it's not an easy road and then you are sorrowful every time in the day you smile when you are with other people you smile but in uh, when you are alone by yourself and you see the consequence of what you're doing and everything you're regretting uh, and you're saying why am i like this when we get saved he grants us the joy the joy of salvation it says restore unto me the joy of salvation full salvation full joy continual salvation continual joy and upright salvation that sets you up and upright joy he puts us on he puts you on the high level and he says uphold me with thy free spirit that is what he 
it does, it will do it in your life. Accomplish it in your life. Look at Luke chapter 1. We're looking at verse 72. In Luke chapter 1, verse 72, to perform the mercy. You see that? Salvation is by mercy. Redemption is by mercy. Righteousness is by mercy. Healing is by mercy. Deliverance is by mercy. Perform. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. And then in verse 73, it says, The oath which he swore to our father Abraham, verse 74, that he would grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemies. Delivered out of the hands of our enemies. Amen. Delivered out of the hands of our enemies. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are enemies without. There are enemies within. There are enemies external. There are enemies internal. There are enemies public outside there. You are moving on and you are getting on. And the people that do not like the progress you are making, the success you are having, the joy you have, and the victory you have, and the success you have outside, outside there. If they go against you, the Lord says it will deliver you from all the enemies. But there is an internal enemy. There is a personal enemy. And that enemy within is greater than the enemy without. The one who says this life of righteousness and this life of holiness. I'm tired. I'm giving up. And the voice is speaking within. That enemy within that says backslide that says go take your bottle of alcohol again that says go take up your secret marijuana again that enemy inside you he wants to ruin you the one speaking from within and it says are you not tired bible bible every time holiness holiness every time and you, other people are enjoying their lives and you are here and saying holy holy righteous righteous power power jesus jesus heaven heaven other people are enjoying and that thing tells you from inside you to turn your back on the Christ that saved you to turn your back on the life of righteousness and holiness that's the enemy within that enemy inside you is greater it's higher it's more powerful it's more destructive than enemies without but that enemy within God will silence that enemy you will not backslide you will not go back from the Lord. The enemy from without and the enemy from within. The inside push into evil. The inside push into the old lifestyle. It's an enemy. But then he says that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. Amen. You, let me ask you a question. If you were not afraid that somebody will say something, somebody will do something, somebody will act somehow, somebody will criticize you, somebody will belittle you, somebody will make fun of you, if you were not afraid, if there was no fear in your heart, watch, hide, Will you reach? That's why the Lord wants you to reach the highest height, the highest peak. And He wants you to understand that on earth, in the sea, anywhere, there is nothing to fear. And then He delivers you. He says, Now I set you free, free from fear. And you move on and you do what the Lord has created you to do. You will reach the highest peak in Jesus' name. Look at verse 75. In holiness and righteousness, 
before him in holiness and righteousness when there is no fear no fear within no fear without no fear around when there's no fear no fear of a persecutor no fear of somebody that will uh, double cross your way no fear of anything and you only have the faith in god and the power of god that works in you and the mercy and the love and the grace when there's no fear and you know heaven is smiling on you and all the people that frown the Lord will kind of silence them. You will live in holiness. Yeah. I will live in holiness. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. All the days of our life. All the days of our life. How long are you going to live in holiness? How long are you to live in righteousness? Look at uh, number two now. Point number two is the recovery from frightful sicknesses through the gracious, unceasing mercies of God. It's all by mercy that we're healed. It's all by mercy that we recover. It's all by mercy that we are set free from every yoke. Every yoke in your life broken tonight in Jesus name. Every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every demonic oppression and possession tonight and the night will break every yoke in your life in Jesus name look at Psalm 103 Psalm 103 we're looking at recovery from frightful sicknesses through gracious unceasing mercies it says in Psalm 103 verse 1 blessed be the Lord bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless his honored name bless his exalted name bless his mighty and powerful name look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says bless the Lord O my soul soul and forget not all his benefits what are the benefits look at verse 3 it says who forgiveth all thine iniquities all thine iniquities all 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 he'll forgive everything and then who healeth all thy diseases he heals all diseases cancer will be healed Tuberculosis will be healed. Yeah. HIV AIDS will be healed. Yeah. A near will be healed. Yeah. Tumor, fibroid will be taken away. Blind eyes will be healed. And deaf ears and dumb tongues will be healed. Even tonight, here and everywhere, we're connected in Jesus' name. Yeah. As He forgives all sins iniquities he also heals all diseases and all sicknesses look at verse 4 there in verse 4 who redeemeth thy life from destruction who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies you see it's all by the mercy of god forgiveness by mercy not marriage healing by mercy not marriage deliverance by mercy not marriage new life in your body new life in your soul new life everywhere in every place it says by the tender mercies of the lord look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says that lord is merciful and gracious that's why he forgives that's why it saves that's why he heals that's why he delivers it says that lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger slow to anger it says god is slow to anger there are you know people say we're children of god children of god i'm saved i'm even sanctified and they're quick to anger 
they're in a hurry to get angry and if you know from the morning till the afternoon until the early evening there is nothing they have been angry about they say what's happening today i'm looking for something i'm looking for somebody i want to get angry you know when we become children of god it turns our lives around he wants us to be like god and he says it's slow to anger and when we're children of god you're not looking for chance to be angry events to be angry at a person to be angry at and you're not crying an angry face all about a frowning face all about don't you have the joy of salvation those of the release that comes with salvation don't you have the happiness that comes with salvation god is slow to anger and his children are slow to anger they are not looking for things and for people to be angry at it says it's plenteous in mercy it's plenteous in mercy look at verse 11 in verse 11 it tells us for as the heaven is high above the earth so great is his mercy look at that that's the mercy that forgives he'll forgive you tonight that's the mercy that sets free he'll set you free tonight that's the mercy that heals and delivers your day has come your time has come and that mercy is forever and is high it's great and that mercy will not fail and then it says he has that mercy great mercy towards them that fear him look at verse 17 in verse 17 it says but the mercy of the lord is from everlasting to everlasting the mercy of the lord he had mercy back in exodus back in genesis and then in the serves until the end of the old testament and christ came the mercy carrier and the mercy giver that he forgave the worst of sinners he healed the worst of sicknesses and he didn't ask for any pain he didn't ask for anything it's all by mercy and not by marriage and that mercy continues because it's from everlasting to everlasting that mercy will come to you today it says it says the mercy of the lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children he'll save you he'll save your children he'll save their children and from generation to generation until christ comes the mercy for salvation will continue in jesus name look at uh, 145 psalm 145 i'm reading from verse 8 in psalm 145 reading from verse 8 the lord is gracious and is full of compassion and is slow to anger and of great mercy look at it everywhere we go in the psalms everywhere we go in the word of god everywhere we go in the bible he reminds us that god is of great mercy look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says the lord is good to all the lord is good to all let me shout it out the lord is good to all say it aloud tell your neighbor all 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 the sinners the backsliders the disobedient people the rebellious people and the people who are drinking sin like water and they are eating sin like food the people who took pleasure in sin he loves everyone he doesn't want you to perish in sin he wants to save you because he is good that's a savior he is good as healer he is good as deliverer he is good and it says the lord is good to all it's good for them in the east it's good for them in the west it's good for them in the north it's good to them in the south it's good to them in our country it's good to them 
them all over the world he is good to all in every nation the lord is good to all and his tender mercies look at that again everywhere is reminding us you go this way it says remember he has tender mercies then you go that way it says remember his tender mercies and the mercy is here today here in Yola, the lord has tender mercy here at the Alpha location, the Lord has tender mercies. He, there, anywhere you are, you're listening over the radio, you're listening over the television, the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. All thy creatures, the people that God himself has made, the people that God himself has created, all thy works, all thy creatures shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. In verse 11 it tells us, They shall speak of thy glory, the glory of thy kingdom and talk of thy power in verse 12 it says in verse 12 to make known to the sons to the children of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom then in verse 13 it says thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom eternal kingdom unending kingdom enduring kingdom and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations in verse 14 verse 14 says the Lord upholdeth all that fall if you had fallen you were saved before but now you went back to the gutter you went back to your dregs you went back to your alcohol you went back to your substance you went back to the hard drugs and you went back to the fornication to the adultery you went back to the promiscuous life you went back to the defiled life he restores he restores as you come to the lord today and you say lord i went away i've gone far away but i'm coming back home the mercy of the lord will meet you in jesus name the lord upholdeth all that fall and raises up all those that be bowed down he raised you up today it will turn everything around your life today look at james chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 11. james chapter 5 we're looking at verse 11 behold we count them happy which endure and ye have heard of the patience of job of the problem of job of the perseverance of job you have heard what happened to job all the things that came upon him look at this now and you have seen the end you have seen the final thing that the Lord did of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. You see that? Whether it's for Job, or for Jacob, or for Jeremiah, or for anyone suffering, he'll pity you. He'll have compassion on you. And he will show his tender mercy upon your life in Jesus' name. That's why he says in verse 15. Look at verse 15. It says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Tonight, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Over there will heal you. Over there will deliver you. Over there, he'll set you free. Online, everywhere, just focus your heart on God. I'm a sinner, he knows. I'm bad, he knows. I've gone wayward, he knows. I brought this upon myself, he knows. Yet you understand, it's not because you've never done bad things. It's because he's always good. It's because his mercy endures forever. It's because the pity of the Lord, the compassion of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord will still reach you there. And then he'll turn your life around tonight in Jesus' name. He says, the prayer of faith 
shall save the seed and the Lord shall raise him up and if he has committed sins they shall be forgiven him why don't you shout amen if they have committed sin you see I'm a sinner your conscience condemns you the Lord will forgive Satan, the accuser of the brethren, you say, uh -huh, crusade, crusade, and you are there. And the preacher said, God will forgive, and you think you are going to have forgiveness? No, I don't think. I know. I know. I don't think Satan says, do you think you'll be forgiven? Uh -uh, I'm not thinking. I know. I know that. I know that. I know that tonight you'll be forgiven in Jesus' name. If he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Him. Look at verse 16. It says, confess your faults one to another. What's that saying? First of all, you confess to God. If you come to man and you confess and you hide it from God, man is not the final authority to give you forgiveness. God is the final authority to give you forgiveness. And what you do is you confess your iniquity, you confess your sin, you confess your transgression, those hidden things that you have done. God knows them already because light shines before him on everyone on earth. You confess unto God. God in heaven, you know, from here to there, we draw the vertical line. But from here to there, to your neighbor, to your wife, to your husband, to your colleagues, to your friends, to the people around you that you, that you committed sin against horizontally from here to there. You confess your faults to the people you have offended. If you've sto stolen something here, from him, you give back to him. If you have taken a woman from a family, you didn't even have the parents' consent, you just weak her, and then you are gone. You confess your faults. The parents have been sorrowful. Look at this lady that were trained. Look at this her daughter that were trained. And this boy. And this young man that never spent anything. The lady made herself so cheap. And then she's gone with a man we don't even know. You confess your sins one to another horizontally here. And then vertically like that. That makes the cross. And it is when you confess your fault to God, vertical, and you confess your faults to man, the man you have offended, you are not, you know, putting your head like the ostrich in the sand. You feel guilty when you see that man, I stole from that man, and then you turn your eyes away. You know why you have that guilt, that condemnation? Even though you say you are saved, it is because you have not confessed your sin one to another. And when you have the grace of God that you confess to God and you are not going back to them again. And you confess to man and you are not going to that man or any other man to steal from them again. It says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The prayer will avail on your life. Salvation, salvation, yeah. healing, yeah. deliverance, the Lord will accomplish in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's look at number three here. Number three, righteousness of faithful saints through guarded, unadulterated mercies. The righteousness. You see, before we came to the Lord, we were unrighteous now if we say we have come to the lord and we remain on righteousness that cannot be that should not be when we pass through the blood line and the blood of jesus is applied in our hearts applied by faith 
on our situation then that blood will turn us around and it will, will not be the same again when it says this is solution ground and you will not leave like you came what it means is you came in unrighteous you go back righteous amen, amen. you came in a hardened sinner you come out as a holy saint a change happens when we come to the lord and we meet the lord and then we're able to say the things i used to do i do them no more the things i used to drink i drink them no more and the weeds i used to smoke i smoke them no more and the dress that will expose you and make other people to lust after you the dress i used to wear i wear that no more the lies i used to tell the evil i used to do i do them no more that is the evidence of the experience of salvation in our lives righteousness of faithful saints through girded unadulterated mercies it tells us in romans chapter 12 reading from verse 1 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice sin dead is that sacrifice she that liveth in pleasure the pleasure of the flesh is dead while she liveth but it is the salvation of the lord the conversion of the lord coming upon our lives that gives us that mercy and then it says you present your body a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and then in verse 2 it tells source and be not conformed to this world this world is ruled governed by satan satan is the god of this world all those practices all those ideas all those evil things all those wicked things they are they are orchestrated by satan the god of this world and now you have come away from under the authority of satan and you come under the authority of king jesus because of that you are no more under the authority of the god of this world be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god matthew chapter 5 in matthew chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 6 they say blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness you look at your life you say this is not clean enough you look at your life this is not righteous enough you look at your life this is not honest enough you look at your life this is not pure enough you look at your life this is not heavenly enough and then everything i've tried to do by my own righteousness self-righteousness it doesn't make it and it is not acceptable unto God and you want that righteousness that will make you acceptable in the courts of heaven and your hunger and your thirst you say oh Lord I thought I was saved but I look at my life and there's no difference between what I'm doing and what I used to do I want the righteousness that heaven will recognize I want the righteousness that the blood of Jesus alone will accomplish in my life I hunger I thirst and blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled he'll fill you with righteousness today he'll fill your life with a transparent kind of righteousness heaven made righteousness and gracious righteousness the grace and the righteousness that comes from Christ 
himself and then his mark is there even your people the people around you that knew you before they will recognize this man is not pretending this lady is not pretending the righteousness coming from the very throne of grace has come upon his life and that righteousness will work wonders in every life in jesus name look at verse 7 in verse 7 blessed are, are the merciful because you have received of the mercy of god and you say the mercy of god that forgive me is the mercy of god that set me free is the mercy of god that turned my life around is the mercy of god that gave me a converted life he changed life he transformed life because you got mercy or merited you also now give that mercy unto all the people you are no more harsh hard tough difficult that in the past people could not walk along with you and everybody feared you and everybody bit anywhere you were people knew be careful be careful that woman is there she knows how to nag she knows her tongue it's like there's acid on her tongue and when she speaks to you the acid will burn you burn you up but now she's saved she's got the mercy of god she's got the compassion of the lord and because of that lord i'm grateful how could i ever be forgiven how could i ever have a changed life and because of the mercy that she has got she is able to show mercy to other people now she is merciful charity begins at home mercy begins at home to her husband the husband now to help to his wife and the parents to the children and the child that says now mommy daddy i am saved the cruel thing the difficult thing the dangerous thing she used to do will do no more because mercy has come unto him mercy has come unto her and she stretches forth the hand of mercy and she speak he speaks with the tongue of mercy and blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy look at verse 8 in verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart blessed are the pure in heart. before we came to christ were polluted in our heart pollution in the heart and all those uh, evil things that he thinks that he thoughts that he life that he plan that he imagination all those things were there but now we come to christ and the blood of jesus christ that forgives us sets us free and purifies the heart blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see god i will see god not with a defiled heart not with an impure heart not with a polluted heart you're going to see god you see god because he has cleansed you he has forgiven you he has taken all those evil things away and now the mercy of god has brought salvation full salvation the mercy of god has brought cleansing real cleansing the mercy of god has turned your life around for the better if it's not happened yet it will happen tonight yeah. to you yeah. i said to you and to you that mercy of god will operate in every life tonight in jesus name <laughs> hebrews chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 14 hebrews chapter 4 we're looking at verse 14 it says seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast a profession what's a profession that jesus is my savior hold that fast that jesus is my healer hold that fast that jesus is my deliverer hold that 
fast that Jesus will show mercy unto me. Hold that fast. That Jesus, your proclamation, your profession, that Jesus will not reject me. Hold that fast. That Jesus is able and Jesus will cleanse me. Our profession. That Jesus will manifest his mercy, his love, his compassion and turn my life around towards heaven. Hold on and hold fast that profession seen then that we have a great 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 high priest that is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast a profession look at verse 15 in verse 15 for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched or the feeling of our infirmities is touched that you are languishing in sin is touched that you are sorrowful in your sin is touched that the, the stream of your sin like a sea like a river is uh, driving you and sweeping you on fast to a lost eternity because of that he has pity is touched with the feeling of our infirmities and he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin look at verse 16 in verse 16 let us therefore come let us therefore come to the Savior. Let us therefore come to the healer. Let us therefore come to the deliverer. Let us therefore come to the helper. Let us therefore come to the compassionate maker. Let us therefore come. This is your time. I said this is your time. As you come, it will save you. As you come, it will heal you. As you come, it will deliver you. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy you see that that mercy is still available from everlasting to everlasting from generation to generation from one place to the other from one man to his neighbor from one woman to a neighbor the mercy of god is still there that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need this is the time when the lord himself will show his mercy and grant you his mercy for forgiveness say amen, amen. his mercy for freedom say amen. amen his mercy for healing say amen. amen his mercy for deliverance say amen, amen. it's vouch and eyes closed it's vouch and eyes closed mercy is here today to forgive mercy is here today to change your life and to transform your life mercy is here today to turn everything around for the better and as you you look at your life and you say I don't merit anything. I know how sinful my life is. I know how evil my life is. But I want the mercy of God. Wherever you are, here in Yola, here in every stage, you know you need the mercy of God that will forgive you, that will set you free, that will give you salvation, full salvation, that will give you transformational salvation, a kind of salvation that transforms your life you need mercy here tonight you need mercy over there tonight wherever you are raise up your hand God bless you that God bless you that God bless you God bless you there raise up that hand very well and you're telling the Lord you are pointing to heaven the mercy comes from you the salvation comes from you the forgiveness comes from you the freedom comes from you and the conversion comes from you the transformation comes from you that's why you're raising up your hand now oh lord i need mercy i need mercy that will forgive i need mercy that will set me free 
I need mercy that will change my life. I need mercy that will transform my life. Raise up that hand wherever you are. Online, raise up that hand. Indicate there, I want the mercy for salvation. I want the mercy for forgiveness. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, you stand up. You are standing up for Jesus. You are standing up for his uh, salvation. You are standing up for his forgiveness. Stand up, stand up for Jesus and say, Lord, I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness. You are raising up your hand. Did you hear what I said? Raise up your hand and stand up and say, Lord, I need your mercy. I need your grace. I need your help. So that after that salvation, it will also help you to labor in newness of life. That whatever you were before, you will not be like that again. You are standing up now. As you stand up, confess to the Lord and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself the good works I try to do they're so dirty they have ulterior motive all that cannot save me but Lord I come save me forgive me and grant me the joy of your salvation the happiness that comes with your salvation grant unto me now I'm going to pray with you and for you Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Father of all compassion, of all mercies, of all love, you love all your people. That's why you sent Jesus Christ to bear and to carry our sins away. Lord, I pray for everyone standing raising up their hands desiring that they will have your forgiveness and the freedom and the salvation save them in jesus name Amen. forgive all their sins take and blot away all the condemnation all the guilt in their lives in jesus name Amen. And let your spirit bear witness with their hearts that their sins are forgiven. That their lives are turned around. And give them help and grace not to continue in their sins anymore. In Jesus' name, turn every life around for the better. Heavenward, righteous, holy pure even from now in jesus name let your spirit bear witness with every heart every soul that they are now children of god and they have the grace of god now to live in newness of life confirm it lord for everyone in jesus name i pray it is done i said it is done Keep on standing. Our counselors are there and they'll help you and uh, grant you the privilege of telling who you are and what the Lord has done. And they'll make you feel a particular sleep that will help us to keep on helping you. We'll call on a um, uh, moderate overseer to take over now. Congratulations for the mercy that has been extended to you. Fill the forms clearly, write in capital letters. And when you finish writing, submit to the counselor attending to you. This is to enable us, help you, how you can continue in this new life. Counselors, let's do it very fast. Let's spread to the back, to my right, to my left, and the middle hall. Take the data, write everything clearly, describe when necessary. Where there are no house addresses, you can describe very clearly so that we'll be able to trace them. Those online, you can also fill the form by clicking the link below your system there so you can give us information about yourself to enable us help you. Counselors, let's spread and 
when you finish where you are attending to, get to the other place so that we can quickly finish. Remember, our Father is coming up again to pray for your miracle, the miracle of mercy that God is about to give you in this final night. So keep praying and preparing yourself right now because today there will be an explosion of miracles. So be praying and preparing yourself and be telling the Lord, I will not leave you this final night. I will receive my miracle of mercy. God has released his mercy of salvation, mercy of restoration. He has all kinds of mercy for you here tonight. Fill the forms very quickly. Those who cannot write, please let's help them to write. And those who do not have writing materials, by road to write, please help them to write. And as soon as you collect those forms, ensure you submit them to your supervisor. Tonight is night of wonders. Tonight is night of wonders. Amen. So pray and call upon God as you prepare yourself. We are not in a hurry tonight. By the grace of God, you receive your own before you go. Counselors, when you finish taking the, the data, please stand by those who have challenges and help them to come out and give their testimonies when it is time. Practically, God will demonstrate his power here tonight. Not by your power, not by might, but by mercy. Tonight, pray and tell the Lord, I am ready to experience your all round mercy in my life. Remember, the believer's banquet for all those who gave their lives to Christ before today and those who, are, who have just given their lives to Christ now on the 4th of December. Believers' Banquet at our headquarter church in Yola at Pupule Street, GRA, and all over the regions and in all other states and centers globally. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Whatever challenge, whatever sickness, whatever ailment, the Lord is here to manifest his mercy in everyone tonight. And you are part of it. It's your turn. Say, it's my turn. It's my turn. Get ready. Prepare yourself. Counselors, if you are done, you signify by waving at me. If you are done, signify by waving your hands. Those counseling behind the choir stand, if you are done, can you wave your hand? Let me see. If you are done, wave your hands. Wave your hands. Thank you very much. I can see you waving your hands there. Okay, the hall facing me, I can also see you waving your hands. Those by my left hand side, if you are done, can you also wave your hand? Those by my left hand side. Okay, please let's round up very quickly there. Please be preparing Tonight, we are not coming here tomorrow again. This is the final night. And God will not allow you to live here with your challenge. He will not allow you to go home with any challenge you have come with. Tonight, tell the Lord, I will never let you go. This mess is here, not because of what you are, not because of what you have. But he is going to give you the miracle mercifully tonight. And you will enjoy your own and you will carry 
and go home with it in Jesus' name. So be praying, be praying, be praying. The man of God will soon come up, be praying and telling the Lord, this is my night. This is my night. I will experience it. I will testify. It's your turn. You have been wondering, many people have been giving testimony. Tonight is your turn. Even those who gave before, if God gives you another one tonight, because you may have double, triple, God will multiply your miracles, and you will testify more tonight in Jesus' name. So please prepare yourself. Those by my left hand side, if you are done, can you wave at me? Can you wave at me? The counselors, if you are done there, please wave your hands. Wave your hands. Thank you very much. Shall we rise up on our feet now? Let's rise up on our feet. Rise up on your feet and get ready as the servant of God comes to release the mercy of God. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. You know that your miracle is coming tonight by the mercy of God. I said, praise the Lord. By his mercy, he forgives. By his mercy, he sets free. By his mercy, he heals. By his mercy, he delivers. And it's not because of marriage. It's not because of what you pay, but because of what he has done. That's why he heals Christ the healer. Christ the Redeemer and Christ the Deliverer is there tonight. I said it's there tonight. Your surrounding has taken your voice away. I said he's here tonight. He will heal you. He will deliver you. Every kind of sickness, every kind of infirmity, he'll take away right there tonight in Jesus' name. This is the final night. Finite, final for that sickness. Final for that infirmity. Final for that yoke. Final for that affliction. And the glory of God will come upon your life. Amen. The healing, the deliverance, Amen. the redemption, Amen. the miracle, Amen. final tonight. All things that were painful in your life, the sicknesses in your life, you'll drop them here tonight. Amen. Final, final, final for the suffering. You lay your hand when you have the problem here and online. You lay that hand there expecting that when you hear the final amen, everything would have gone. And then you raise up the other hand knowing you welcome healing tonight. You welcome deliverance tonight. You welcome miracle tonight. Amen. The Lord is ready now. He has come with your miracle. Ready to receive. Get ready to receive. Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. We bless your name tonight because we are a God of love. A God of compassion. A God that has pity. A God of mercy. And Lord, tonight we pray. You show your pity, your love, your compassion, your mercy on everyone tonight. In Jesus' name. Yeah every form of sickness every form of infirmity every form of disease take everything away tonight in jesus name problem in the brain problem in the mind problem of insanity problem of confusion touch them right now take everything away right now perform the supernatural deliverance right now in jesus name all those who have a sight problem their eyes are dim or their eyes are blind by your merciful uh, uh, compassion i pray lord touch those blind eyes now 
open the blind eyes in Jesus name those who are deaf and dumb you have a God of power Lord I pray you manifest your power on them now and open their tongue open their ears they will hear they will speak well in Jesus name any swelling on their body hunchback I command you come out in Jesus name swelling of that boil and in the armpit I command now be healed in Jesus name tumor in the brain and swelling of fibroid inside there come out in Jesus name elephantiasis big legs I pray that balloon will be deflated right now touch them and heal them by your mighty power in Jesus name uh, near I pray be healed in Jesus name prostate cancer you are healed now in Jesus name cancer in the breast cancer in the lungs cancer in the liver cancer anywhere be healed in Jesus name that is your blood dry up right now Lord I pray for everyone right left center outside there everywhere I pray now receive your healing receive your deliverance receive your miracle in Jesus name here at the Alpha location in Yola everyone receive your miracle online everyone receive your miracle radio television audience anywhere everywhere receive your miracle Lord manifest your power everywhere right now and let there be let there be let there be the fulfillment of the expectation of everyone in Jesus name I pray amen the miracle is there check up yourself you see the miracle resident there in your body the miracle is